Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's Vatan Bond. This is another episode of Say That with Vatan Bond. This is Real Talk, No Cap. Um, before I get into it, I want to just first off say uh, this is sponsored by www.vatanbondmusic.com, where you could uh, go sign up for my email list, get the Gold Bars mixtape. And it's also sponsored by the listeners of Vatan Bond. Shout out to y'all. Much love. So, with episode eight, I was going to switch some things up, try something new, uh, and, and I'm going to do that, but I'm actually going to pivot real quick because I want to talk about Kobe Bryant. So today I'm recording this on Monday, January 27th, and, uh, you know, of course, the whole world knows Kobe Bryant passed away yesterday morning at the age of 41. Uh, one of the greatest basketball players ever. Uh, I'm devastated by the news. I'm hurt. The whole world is hurt right now. Uh, it's it's just a sad story, man. Sad situation. You know, him and his daughter and uh, a bunch of other people lost their lives in a, in a horrific helicopter crash. It, like, when I first heard the news, I couldn't believe it. I saw one of my Facebook friends said something about, you know, rip Kobe. I'm like, wait, 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 hold on a second. I looked, I looked up Kobe Bryant myself because I thought it was a hoax. I looked it up and TMZ reported Kobe Bryant, you know, was killed in a helicopter crash. And I was like, well, wait, hold on. This can't be right. This is a hoax. This is definitely a hoax. This is not, there's no way. There's no fucking way. So I was like really waiting for more news to come out and and somebody to confirm. And, you know, after about an hour, hour and a half, two hours, that's when like more of a support started coming in. So I was like, yo, this is real. And I was hurt. Now, I was never a Kobe Bryant fan. As a player, which doesn't mean that I didn't see his talent. Like I knew how great he was. But see, when I was growing up, my favorite player was Michael Jordan. Then after Jordan, it was Allen Iverson. I had a pair of I3s and everything. So Allen Iverson was my favorite player after Jordan. And then after AI, it was LeBron and Carmelo. Those were my guys. Um, I'm a Charlotte Hornets fan. That's my favorite team. I'm not a Lakers fan. Uh, I'm a Charlotte Hornets fan. So, you know, for years, I had that kind of that mentality and that thought like, oh, you know, Kobe got drafted to Charlotte. He w- he didn't want to play in Charlotte. Man, fuck that guy. You know, he didn't want to play for us. We could have the greatest player ever. Nah, I mean, <laughs> this things like this happen in sports sometimes, you know. The Lakers like Kobe before the during the pre-draft process, and they wanted to go ahead and get him, so they made the deal with Charlotte. All right, whatever. Charlotte probably didn't even want Kobe. I don't know. You know, I I don't know. I don't know for sure. But as a Hornets fan, you know, I'm I'm sitting here thinking like, man, that would be lit if we had Kobe Bryant. You know, that would be phenomenal. It didn't work out that way. It was destined for him to become a Laker, and to have that phenomenal 20 year career that he had with them, you know, five championships, you know, 18 time all-star, just crazy, crazy career, just blessed beyond measure, man. Rest in peace to Kobe, rest in peace to his daughter. I don't even want to think about how his wife, when she found out the news, how his other daughters found out the news. I don't even want to imagine the pain that, That's I'm just I'm gutted when I think about that. It's just it's sickening to me because I could not imagine it happening. I don't have any children. I don't have a wife, but I do have loved ones. And I couldn't imagine like losing them in such an such a sudden, horrific, violent way. We're just losing them in general. You know, you know, we all know life is short. We know that we could go. At any time, in any way, 
but hell, man, it's just hard. So the main thing I wanted to talk about in this podcast is the Mamba mentality, because as we mourn Kobe, you know, we, we can mourn him. But at the same time, let's celebrate his life. Let's take a look at his life and, and really grab the lessons from his life. So, you know, in case y'all kind of forgot, you know, Kobe was trying to rap, too. He, he was trying to rap. He was trying to get his music going a little bit. And it didn't work out. But um, and, and Allen Iverson tried to do the same thing, too. It didn't, didn't really work out. But 40 bars is still crazy. But anyway, the mama mentality that's to me like the main lesson. So as we mourn him, we can also celebrate his life and think about the lessons that he left and, and the way he touched so many people. That's why so many people are so sad because he touched so many people in a in a profound way. Even though, like me personally, I wasn't a fan, but I still recognize his greatness. Why? Because of the Mamba mentality. So I saw a video with him where he was saying you know, at first, his goal was to be the greatest of all time. Then he realized how fickle that goal was and just how, you know, how small of a goal that was. And he switched it. He he kind of pivoted and really focused on becoming impactful and being able to touch people in a different way. That's a great goal to have. For me personally, that's actually my goal with music. My goal initially was just to be a star. You know, it was to be like in sync and marry Britney Spears and, and, you know, have the diamonds and the jewelry and all the money and the groupies and all that stuff. But, you know, as I get older, I want to make music that'll make a kid, a 13 year old kid, feel a certain way. If I can boost this kid, if I could inspire and entertain and uplift this kid the way that my favorite rappers did for me when I was 13, 14, you know, that's the kind of impact I want to have. I want to be able to really make an impact on the world in a positive way using my gifts, using my talents. That's what Kobe did. And I think at the end of the day, we all need to go ahead and take our gifts and Make an impact on people in a positive way. If we can have a positive effect on everybody who's around us and then even more people, we're using our blessings to bless others, to prosper others. So the Mamba mentality, I'm focused on being the best, focused on being as great as I can be, have as big of an impact as possible. And I'm going to work my ass off all day, every day for years on end and nothing's going to get in my way. I have no fear. That's that Mamba mentality. And that's the way I think, you know, in 2020 and beyond, like we all need to hone our gifts, master our crafts and really deliver to people what we've got. You don't have to be a basketball star. You don't have to be the greatest rapper or singer. But if you want to do that, if you want to be the best basketball player, the best football player, the best rapper, the best singer, the best actor, the best comedian, the best podcaster, the best producer, the best beat maker, the best janitor, the best influencer, the best entrepreneur, the best personal trainer, the best coach, the best chef, you know, no matter what field that you choose, you can dig down deep. You can hone and master your craft And you can have a great impact on people. I think we're put here really to leave the world better than we found it. We're all here for a reason and for a purpose. This ties into everything that I talk about as far as, you know, being a master of the universe and being on purpose. That's what Kobe Bryant was. Kobe Bryant was a master of the universe. Because he created something huge. When we say Kobe, everyone knows who we're talking about. We don't even need to say his whole name. Kobe, it means something. That's how much of an impact he had. So I think we should all strive to make a similar impact no matter what we do, no matter what we're doing. That's the name of the game. We're shifting away from perfection because you don't have to be perfect. Kobe didn't, you know win everything he's he's lost in the finals before you know he lost to boston in the finals so he wasn't perfect 
Tom Brady has lost a couple Super Bowls. He ain't perfect, but the impact is still there. It's still felt. See, you could lose and still make an impact. But the thing about the losses is that they're never really losses. They're lessons. Hey, I know that I can do better. I know that I still need to take it to the next level because, you know, especially when you're going up against people who are also in their greatness. Something's got to give. Just keeping things in perspective, just, you know, keeping this man in my thoughts, his daughter, all the other people who lost their lives and then their families who are dealing with this tough, tough tragedy. Definitely sending my thoughts and prayers to everybody involved in that situation and thinking about my own mortality as well you know like damn like shit could easily happen to me anytime anywhere so that's why I'm just making a concerted effort to be grateful for where I am to be grateful for what I have and just to really focus on what I want what I desire And just to take action as often as I can, because we got to fill our lives with the things that bring us joy. Life's too short to live in fear, to live in anger, to hold grudges. We need to be focused on upward movement, focused on our happiness, focused on what we truly desire. And, you know, I think. If we do that every day, we'll be able to look back at the end and be like, yo, I'm good. You know, I did my thing. And um, yeah, man, that's really all I have to say about that. So rest in peace to Kobe. Rest in peace to his daughter and all those people who lost their lives, man. Let's let's celebrate the life of the Mamba, you know, send our prayers out and really keep in mind the message that he left for us, which is have that Mamba mentality Focus on excellence in whatever it is that we do and to make an impact on people and to improve people's lives where we can, when we can, as often as possible. All right. So that's episode eight of Say That with a Tom Bond. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, leave a review. I will shout you out. Definitely want to send love to all my supporters and listeners. Everybody who's been listening every single week, man. Much love to you. I appreciate it. I'm having so much fun doing this, so much joy just by communicating with you guys and and just, you know, creating content for you. So, yeah, this is it. And uh, I see you guys next time. Say that. Have a good time. Enjoy life. It's um, life is too short to to, to get bogged down to be discouraged or. Um, you have to keep moving. You have to keep going. Put one foot in front of the other, smile, and just keep on rolling.